my God! Okay, it's happening. Everybody stay calm. What's the Everybody procedure, everyone? Calm. What's the procedure? Stay f calm! Wait, 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 wait. Everybody just calm down! All right, everybody, welcome. Welcome to the show. We are joined here by Julia Song, and we're going to be talking about the uh, war and our culture. And of course, uh, Christian, you might know him as Poland. Uh, welcome, Julia. Thank you so much for giving us an hour of your time. Thanks for having me. Yeah, yeah it's a pleasure. I just uh, finished reading your um, article that you wrote about your uh, surviving socialism in, in Brazil. It's, uh, you wrote that last year, correct? I think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, it's a very interesting thing. We're uh, obviously, you know, uh, we're um, involved in a kind of smaller niche uh, culture war situation here. Uh, we just uh, are trying to defend the small realm of uh, comic books, but um, uh, the you know the whole thing extends out far and wide. You've obviously had a really uh, far more you know serious. Uh, interaction with all this stuff you saw your uh, you know your country fall to the uh, evils of socialism and all that stuff um just for the crowd here that might not know could you uh tell us a little bit about that uh about what happened there um yeah so in 2003 the socialist party started taking over they stayed in power for 16 years they wouldn't really leave and uh the everybody is familiar with the situation economically in brazil it was really bad so i participated in some of the movements to try to um get them out of power and we were successful otherwise they wouldn't have left mm. but you've uh, you've since moved to the u.s and uh i, I saw in your article they said you you know you're joining the fight there to um you know uh I guess what well, what you said uh, that you know you were very surprised when you moved to the U.S. that you saw people living in this, you know, free and prosperous prosperous country, uh, you know, trying to introduce the same policies that you know nearly well and did to an extent you know, bring your own uh, home country to its knees. Um, yeah, it's a uh, it's it's such a it's such a weird thing, uh, I, I guess. And what's um. What, what's it, what's that experience been like? And like you know, you've come from it, you've you've lived through it, and then you see you know these people out there advocating for the exact same policies. Um, I think it's sad because I don't think we're necessarily ready for it from even a psychological standpoint as a s society. We haven't had war. We haven't had major economic decline to the point where you know there's a whole lot of people. I mean, we've started to see it with COVID and hopefully it's going to get better before it gets worse. But when everybody's losing their jobs, there's a lot of violence, there's a lot of uh, hunger, there's a lot of poverty. Um, society as a whole changes completely, the dynamics change. So I don't necessarily think that people understand the consequences of that and they're, they're not ready for it. So in one way, I'm like, you you don't know what you're talking about. Uh, in another way, I, you know, it's hard to dismiss them mm -hmm. because they've gained so much ground to the point where it went from being a joke to they're serious. So right. I just, I worried about people here who wouldn't necessarily be able to adapt to this form of society. And I'm not sure how Australia is, but I'm assuming it's something similar. Yeah, it's it's funny because I don't know if it's, it's exactly similar. There's so many more protections and freedoms. There's so much more liberty in, in the United States. But at the same time, we don't have mobs of uh, Antifa and radicals running around the streets, smashing up buildings, tearing down statues. Uh, we don't have any of that. It's all very, it's a little, it's been a much more peaceful transition, so to speak. But on the other hand, here in Victoria, we have had the, I think it's the longest lockdown of any place anywhere in the world in response to COVID. And, uh, you know, it's not like the numbers have necessarily justified that. Um, you know, 
obviously any any numbers bad you know you don't want people dying from a, from a from a from a virus but at the same time you know if you look at our numbers uh, it would make americans blush we're talking you know the, the 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 new cases the other day were two the number of deaths for a while have been zero for a long time and 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 then a bill has just passed here to extend their emergency powers until april next year yep and so you know it's like uh it's like there's there's a lot of chaos going on in the states um but you know i i have more trust in the institutions in the states like with you know they had the bill of rights and and i think there is just a kind of general sense of you know like uh like christian has on his flag behind him don't tread on me you know give me liberty or give me death going on over there then here in australia i feel like uh we're just sort of already beaten uh you know as a as a as a society we're kind of demoralized and just accepting our fate while businesses have started to close you know you go to any kind of strip mall or little shopping area there's going to be closed stores now that were otherwise thriving before all this do people in australia um look up to the movements happening in the us as sort of like uh, uh something that they feel would motivate them to go against the lockdowns or no uh they do we do look to the states but it's just so um i i think we're still in that point where everyone feels alone you know everyone feels like there's there's not enough of us to really do anything so what'll happen is uh you know some people will organize on facebook or whatever you know well they they've tried organizing on facebook and we've seen what happens when they do that and then when they go out the numbers aren't big enough that the police can just I mean you'll get 12 people standing in a park uh and then there'll be 100 police all in riot gear um you know coming with their shields and everything and then after that happens twitter for the whole day will be just flooded with a uh, hashtag i stand with dan dan is our premier who is like the exact same as a governor um and uh and then uh, all the all the media all the tv shows will all laugh at these covidiots and uh you know it'll be a whole big like oh my god look at these idiots they're so stupid for um putting people's lives in danger and for what uh, so it's 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 like the whole machine is against uh, anyone who wants to protest and and on top yeah, of that we saw us. Exactly, exactly. It's like you really need the numbers. So during the first lockdown, just like everywhere in America, you know, there were the BLM marches going on. We had them here as well. And the exact same government just said, well, we can't stop them, so we're not even going to try. Uh, and that's how it happened. And, you know, so people see that kind of two-tier approach. And, you know, we get angry in our homes by ourselves, but I don't think we've reached that tipping point where like that you described in your article where you have people out on the streets every day uh, kind of fighting back. Yeah, it was some of this protests were gather a million people, but it's it's how how I mentioned society changes so rapidly mm -hmm. once they're put you know it's a slippery slope and so suddenly you're losing your privacy on the internet and suddenly you lose your job because of something that you posted and then it's not easy to get another job because the economy is bad and so things slowly go down in that direction to the point where uh, 16 years later it's not sustainable uh, people are dying left and right things aren't go getting better there's there's not one person that you know that hasn't dealt with a serious physical violence type of situation mm -hmm. you kind of like have to push people to the limit and i don't think we're there yet so i do believe that they're going to keep pushing their shit i'm sorry i don't know if i should even say that uh, word. it's fine <laughs> it's fine pushing their bull crap yep and we're going to keep taking because one we don't understand 
uh, where this is going. We don't understand, you know, we're very, we have our jobs, we have our lives, we're very busy with it. And we just, ah, that's fine. Somebody will do something. I'm going to vote. And so things mm -hmm. progressively get worse to the point where we don't really know what's happened. We haven't experienced that before. We don't know what to do. We don't feel empowered to do anything. We feel like the government is corrupt. And okay, so we're gonna. Do, what am I gonna do about it? Like, how am I gonna go against the government at this point? And so it takes, you know, years for people to actually get fed up. And by then, uh, a lot of innocent people die. A lot of people suffer. There's a lot of, you know, bad situation that bad things that come out of that that type of um, environment. So I do wish that people in the U.S. would stop it before it gets there. Mm -hmm. But with this whole COVID situation where they took away our abilities to work, took away our abilities to move, they did whatever it is that they wanted and nobody really could do anything. Nobody stood against it. We just were so shell-shocked that we didn't know what to do. And so there's um, this lady in, in Victoria, um, she got arrested for posting on Facebook, right? Yep. Yeah, she uh, she made a post and she was arrested, detained, this pregnant lady in her home in front of her kids. You know, they, they barged in and arrested her for, uh, she she'd uh, she'd posted about a protest um that she you know she wanted to put on and it was all and and this is the thing this was a stage three lockdown so it's not 100 percent clear all the time what's allowed and what's not and you know it's it's not really law it's like mandates it's emergency power mandates so it, you know it, even if you go you can i was googling it earlier to find out what the new rules are they're not easy to find you have to go in and read the friggin um the, the bills to know exactly what you're allowed to do it's all very vague but yeah she posted that and the police came in arrested her took her away i guess she's going to be going to court um and then just the other day there's a woman i saw uh, you posted a video about this on your twitter there was a woman walking all well within the rules i mean this one is cut and dry she's walking around uh in with it's two kilometers from her home so we have a five kilometer radius five kilometers i think is about uh three miles or something like that i think it's like that anyway it's a you know it's a contained area that you're allowed to exist in and exercise in and you're allowed to exercise for one or two hours a day so she thought well during my exercise i'm gonna do uh you know what i can and she put on a sign that said i think boot dan or something like that again the premier she had a bandan written on her mask. So she's wearing a mask. Uh, she's out doing her exercise. The police walk up to her and say, you're clearly protesting. Uh, that's not one of the four prescribed reasons that you're allowed to be out of your house. Here's a $1,600 fine. Uh, yeah. I mean, they, this is, this is scary now. They're making money like that. They're making money like that. So you, you see that, for example... Um, the the mandates they do have to have some kind of uh, uh, reason behind them. They do have to have you know data to support mm -hmm. them. But people aren't really taking the state, taking the police to court. They aren't really fighting back. There's this this gentleman here in the U.S. His name is uh, Roger Stone, and mm -hmm. he's in his seventies. His crime uh, supposedly was that he lied to Congress. So the FBI brings 20 people, five in the morning, you know, swat his house. He has his deaf wife, who's also older. He is an older man. Like, what is the purpose of that? You're swatting the house of a dude that's 70 years old because he supposedly lied to the Congress. So, and all of the, uh, you know, CNN was there, MSN, like they were all there ready to yeah. film. I mean, if this isn't psyops, if this isn't political optics, what is it? Yeah, they, they can get away with anything. But if you try to do 
half of what they do, then they come at us like they try to make an example out of us. So I'm sure that the purpose of arresting this pregnant woman was to make an example out of that, you know, breaking into her house so that other mm -hmm. people wouldn't do the same. Um, they couldn't just let the the rebellion go unchecked. Yeah, it's funny because here they call themselves the resistance, yet they have all the corporate media, all the education behind them, all of academia, you know, all of the bureaucracies are on their side, but yet they're the resistance. It's great. Yeah. And we also, unbelievably, I mean, this, <laughs> we have our curfew here. So I don't think we're allowed to be out after 9 a.m. I don't know if it's recently been listed, uh, uh, um, taken away. It, like they keep changing the, you know, the rules all the time. But we, at least we did have a curfew. Uh, initially, it was uh, 8 p.m. And, you know, it was all soldiers. You know, we need to do this as part of containing uh, the spread and all that sort of stuff. And then it came out. Someone asked. Someone just asked the, you know, the chief health officer did you recommend this and he's like it wasn't my recommendation it was the police so someone asked the police chief did you recommend this and he's like it didn't come from me and eventually they found out that it was just an arbitrary choice made by the premier and a couple of other people just to uh lock uh, you know lock people in their homes after 8 p.m and and when they pushed on that, he said, well, the reason we did that is it was about compliance. That's what he said. It was about compliance, making sure people are following uh, the mandates that we set out for them. And, you know, if you had what you said earlier about how quickly this stuff happens, you know, if you had said to that, if you had said that would be happening here in Victoria, uh, you know, months ago, uh, even the start of this year, everyone would have looked at you like you're a crazy conspiracy theorist. Uh, but then all of a sudden now it's happening and everyone is just kind of putting up with it. It's 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 a, just a bizarre situation. And nobody's questioning why coronavirus doesn't spread after 8 p.m. Nobody's questioning why it's here is six feet and in Europe is a different uh, measure. Like nobody's questioning why everyone's all over the place, why everyone seems to have answers that they can't justify for a virus that just appeared supposedly like like what six months ago where are we or a little bit over six months ago mm -hmm. um but they know that six feet they know that 8 p.m they know that this and that they know that bars that serve food aren't really gonna transmit covid but bars that only sell drinks are going to transmit covid so let's close one but let's not close the other um, it's just a, a bizarre thing that nobody's really questioning, like, where does this come from? And people are just, most people are just obeying, really. And it's, to me, I, I, I can't understand, but it's, it's not surprising. Yeah, well, it doesn't sound like, here, I know, here in Victoria, it's, um, you know, we were voted the top the number one most livable city in the world, I think, for 10 years running. So, you know, before all this stuff, it's more or less a great place to live. And, you know, the, the economy was going well and people had work and everything. And, you know, I think that's people are still clinging to that. And, and you know, they have uh, government help and all that sort of stuff. So, a lot of people are still living comfortably. I mean, they're living at home, so it's different, but they're still very comfortable. And I, you know, it, like you said, it takes time for people to, the, the, you know, enough businesses close down, enough people lose their jobs, people start getting hungry, essentially. And that's when they start getting angry. But, yeah, but you uh, don't you know, want to get there. That's exactly. The that you can't tell people this stuff and like it's the same in the states you know you've got people like yourself we've had uh, another another person come on the, on the chat uh, on the show you know she came from venezuela and it seems to be a recurring theme especially in the states you've got so many immigrants from you know south and central america who've been through it before coming and just like wanting to shake people in the states like don't let it get that far. It's awful. Uh, but, you know, 
people have to learn lessons themselves, it seems. I think perhaps one of the things that we could do is that since people, they're really not going to believe it until they see it, um, the people who get most impacted by this type of changes, um, especially at first, they're the more vulnerable type of people, people who are more, you know, any change could be really impacting to their lives. So perhaps we could try to uh, address the situation for those people first, because I don't think a, a, a rich liberal from Portland who keeps voting for liberals is going to care much what happens. But perhaps the people who are leaving the streets, who are the, the, taking the brunt of those public policies, and they don't have a voice, they, they can't really stand up for themselves, they are all alone, they don't have influence, they don't have a, a big paying job. Perhaps those are the people that um, are gonna, you know, first be uh, outspoken about this if we give them a voice. Yeah, I think uh, that yeah. gives Trump a lot of appeal to you. So he appeals to, you know, the everyday person. It's like, I didn't come into politics to enrich myself. I came here to enrich you guys because you guys have been forgotten. Because honestly, there are a lot of people on the coast that could care less. And they live in a whole different bubble than everyone else. And, you know, like that ridiculous thing that California put out the other day saying that put your mask back on in between bites. I mean, basically, they're asking you not even be human anymore. Can't interact with your family. If you're on your deathbed, sorry, no one can come see you. I mean, it's it's really a travesty. And like you're saying, it's driving people to the brink. They've lost their savings because their business got shut down for arbitrary reasons. I mean, at least let them sign a waiver and say, I want to do business. I want to go out, interact with people. I want to actually live instead of just existing. And yeah. to me, it smacks of a lot of the stuff they try and do with climate change. They want to try and regulate every aspect of your life down to your personal interactions. They just in the UK, I'm not sure if you guys saw it. I just posted yeah. about it. They uh, banned couples from, I suppose, uh, uh, copulation. Having, yes, <laughs> intercourse. They, they ban people from, you know, yeah, so is so, it is it if you live you're in a in a relationship but you don't live together? Is that what it is? Yeah, you have to like do some kind of bubble thing. That <laughs> do you have a license for that? <laughs> yeah, you have to write. You have to. It's, it's it's ridiculous. But if you think about it, some of the biggest cities in the UK are under that mandate. So, for example, London is under that mandate, and so people aren't allowed. People are allowed, couples are allowed to meet if it's outdoors, if they social distance, if they wear masks. What kind of relationship is that? Not one I want to be. <laughs> I mean, it's no. exactly right. You know, it, it is scary how quickly this stuff descends into just pure madness i mean we've all probably we've all seen that video of the uh kids at the prom at the dance you know with their oh, like God. they've linked arms backwards and they're just kind of like have you seen that one they're kind of waddling around it's the weirdest thing and you, all, you, all you can think of when you see that video is in 20 years people are going to look back on this like oh my god everyone was insane everyone went insane well, not really, because that's the new normal. So they're going to think we were insane for dancing in front of each other. Yeah, well, I don't, I don't know. I've, you know, I've got colleagues that, uh, you know, up until now have always been, you know, they read The Guardian, they, they you know, they, they only really consume mainstream sources. And, I mean, for the first time ever, they're saying things that I'm like going, whoa, you say that? That's like the kind of thing that I would say, like, you know, we're living in a dictatorship and, uh, you know, maybe things are changing. I, um, I'm in Australia, but I've been following U.S. politics uh, pretty closely going back all the way to uh, George W. Bush. Uh, I've never seen massive, uh, massive rallies and you know, people coming together like uh, the, the um, under like Candace Owens with the I think it's Blexit, 
there's and now I saw a rally with uh, Hispanics. Um, you know, talking about how you know the Democrats haven't done anything for us. I've never seen that before. It seems like there is some kind of change happening over there. I don't know how big it is, how real it is. I mean, I guess we're all going to find out in a few weeks. Yeah. But it, I, I've never seen something like this uh, in what is it now? Like Twenty years of of uh, looking at it from afar. Do you feel that? Um, I I feel that. You know, I honestly, people have asked me that today. I don't know how I feel. People were asking me, what are you going to do after the elections? If, if things go, go south, what is your plan? I don't know what's my plan. I have no idea. I was not prepared for this in any way, shape or form. Um, but I, because of my experience in Brazil, it kind of like instinctively kicked in that I, I knew what to do all of my life. So, for example, things like... Uh, uh, knowing uh, my rights, uh, being ready to go out there and protest, it just naturally kicks in. But I don't think most people do. And I think when you're stuck in this place of be being powerless, um, I I'd like to believe that people are not going to take it, that the people are going to take the streets and they're going to make big rallies and they're going to um, send these people packing, the, this corrupt people packing. But honestly, at this point, I, I don't believe anything. Yeah, I don't, I don't know either. Like, it's so weird. Here, here in Australia, the media is saying it's over. Like, Trump is, has lost. There is no chance. It's, it's a done deal. Uh, and They're saying that I, in Brazil, too. Yeah, it, it makes it seem like Trump already already lost when they don't really show the size of the rallies that he's bringing. He they don't show none of that. They're just trying to get support away from him. It's just a propaganda machine. Yeah, demoralize. Yeah, I saw, but 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 then didn't that happen last time where? Uh, you know, they said Hillary, I mean, Trump has no chance. And then surely that would have had an effect on people not going out to vote because they thought, oh, uh, you know, Hillary's got it in the bag. It seems, I don't know if that's the right strategy, but hey, I mean, what do I know? I, uh, that's their their strategy. I mean, they use it everywhere. That it's So um, socialism, it, it, you know, uh, happens differently in every country, but the way that it starts, the way that it sets itself up, is pretty much the same. So you see the same pattern of propaganda, you see the same pattern of demoralizing, you see the same pattern of dehumanizing, of trying to isolate people, of trying to prevent people from um, relating to their neighbors. So people become, you know, stuck within this own bubble where they don't really relate to anybody. So how am I going to protest with you if you're not like me? It's not like, for example, we're all Americans. It's like, before I'm American, I am a Latino woman. Mm -hmm. I am this, I'm that. I'm a, I'm a queer Latino woman, a poly, whatever. So I'm put into this small box where no one else can relate to me. And so I'm, not, I'm less willing to link arms with people especially if I think that those people are actively fighting against me and when they keep people fighting against each other, nobody's paying attention to what the government's doing. So it's just, it's the same tricks everywhere. You yeah, look. yeah. It's the, all the way back to the Roman days they were doing this stuff. Um, it, it, it's funny that you mentioned that about, you know, what you identify with. We have the same thing in, in a comic books. Some people, um, you know, they go and they, they want to promote their comic or their art and they don't say, you know, I've been an artist for 15 years and I've done this. No, they come out and they say, I'm a Latin ex, uh, gender queer artist. You know, I'm, I'm a, I'm a black lesbian art. Like they always use that. And I always find it funny because I'm I always get tempted to just put one out and say, okay, I'm a straight white artist. Here's my thing. <laughs> and see the kind of reaction that I get. It's because if you say it like that, everyone laughs because it's so absurd. Uh, but you know when they do it, it, it it's part of the uh, it's just part of the furniture now. It it's happened it's happened like that. I liked this comment by uh, Crocodile Tears here, uh, saying they real time changed the definition of sexual preference in the Webster's Dictionary during the Supreme Court justice reading. Did you see that, Julia? No. 
yeah so How deep the rock goes <laughs> so um uh, uh amy barrett that's her name yeah the the person who's ACB? the judge acb she said sexual preference the the you know the term that everyone has said going back as far as i can remember i mean you can either say sexual preference orientation they're kind of interchangeable well someone on twitter took offense to that and said this is offensive preference means a choice which it doesn't but anyway um and in real time within i think it was a matter of hours someone had someone with the power had updated the definition of preference uh, as in sexual preference to be offensive now in the dictionary. You so see, that's, that, like, that's the stuff that they do. They keep us busy fighting over petty little things and fighting each other. Like, what does it even matter? Um, if, if, you know, what does it matter? What is it going to change in anybody's lives? They want to force accept, acceptance for all these different things they're not willing to accept. So we're out here fighting about all the differences, the, the thousand ways we're different from mm -hmm. each other like what is going to affect your life if somebody in north carolina doesn't accept you like it, i'm not i'm not making public policy i'm not doing anything i'm here taking care of my yard what do you care what i like what i don't like what i accept or not i'm entitled to my opinion you're entitled to yours but somehow i become this person's main enemy and we're here fighting over all these little things that we make assumptions about each other. People in the South are fascists. People in the South are racist, etc. And nobody's paying attention to the bills that the government's passing. No, nobody's paying attention to the big things that are affecting uh, our community. The tax increases, the, all these you know, things that have an actual impact on our lives. Nobody's talking about that because we're talking about the difference between preference and whatever else that keeps happening uh i mean i you know i see it a lot because you, you, this sort of stuff gets publicized uh, all over the media you know and i watch a bit of tim pool as well and he talks about this kind of stuff but you know he he does you know highlight these bills that get passed i remember uh, i think last year there was one that made it so that um you could only write if you were a freelance writer for a, you know, for a thing, you could only write a certain amount of words or something. And, and this passed and, you know, everyone, once it had already passed, was like, what the hell? And now all of a sudden they were angry. Uh, and, and now they're upset, but it's like, well, where were you when, you know, these politicians were drafting the bill and arguing it and everything, you were distracted by, you know, someone had said an offensive word on Twitter. They were all dead by net neutrality. <laughs> <laughs> it knocked them out. Mm -hmm. Ah, it's a it's a crazy world we we live in here. Yeah, net neutrality was supposed to be doomsday, right? But yeah, what happened wasn't. with that? Nothing. I don't. Nothing. Nothing happened. Yeah. Mm -mm. I I. There's too many things to focus on. I, I have to admit, I didn't really follow that too closely. And, and it was, you know, I'm it's just supposed kind of... to be the end of the internet. It's supposed to be the end yeah. of any anybody's privacy. It was supposed to be the end of everything, but it wasn't. Amazing how that works. Yeah. I'm so numb. I get so numb to the doomsday, uh, you know, <laughs> all the I mean, doomsday Al Gore stuff. told me that Miami is supposed to be underwater like 10 years ago. Right. I feel a little cheated. Uh, yeah yeah they uh that's what they <laughs> always say my my daughter's eight and all of through 2019 the entire year it was climate change climate change climate change they were like drilling it into these kids heads we had we had kids going out on on marches in the city tears in their eyes and it was actually quite sad you know they they were really genuinely terrified that the world would end in 10 years or 12 years or whatever it was said uh and it was the whole cult of that girl from wherever she's from and and so they did this to the kids and then you know covid hits and we haven't heard anything about climate change in 10 months not a peep here in australia it's just it's like it doesn't exist and so they've, these, got a better, they've got a better tool in their kit now eight, well eight-year-olds have their heads screwed on 
really well, right? They can see through the bullshit pretty well once you lay it out to them clearly. So they're sitting there thinking, well, hang on, you were saying the world is going to end last year. And now that doesn't matter. You know, they're like, hang on, there's something, you know, not quite right here. Were you maybe exaggerating things a little bit there? Um, it's uh, it's nuts. And now and now that uh, they're, they are back at school, now we're learning they're teaching uh, her about uh, feminism and, and all that sort of stuff. Nice. And I was like, oh, here we go. So I, I asked her, you know, what did they tell you? What was it about? So I'm, and then, it's like, okay, so now I've got to try and give a more balanced view of what she was shown. And, um, you know, she got it straight away. It, you know, she she understood exactly because she, she sees it. She sees it. You know, we didn't push her into liking Barbie. She likes Barbie. My son likes trucks. These are not things that we pushed them into. It just happened and she sees all that stuff. Uh, it's so kids are just, simple. You, they really don't don't go. They don't fall for the for the deception. What all these people are doing is a lot of cognitive uh, dissonance. Is a lot of uh, gaslighting. And kids' brains they aren't operating from that level of complexity yet. For example, mm. if you tell me something as an adult, because of all of my experiences uh, dealing with people, good and bad people. If you walk into my house and you say, I'm a good person, my brain is going to be like, is he? Is he not? Could he be lying? What does he want? Why is he telling me he's a good person? Good mm -hmm. people. So, so I have all this complex, uh, complex mindsets and, and different things going on. While a kid is like, if you walk up to that kid, you say, I'm a good person, the kid's going to be like, okay. They, so when you start pushing things that contradict them, themselves, kids can figure it out. But yeah. adults, they will be like trapped into this whole collective hysteria and anxiety yeah. that, you know, kids don't really tend to fall for. It's not a surprise that a lot of these ideas that we're talking about here come from intellectuals, from academia, from philosophers. Uh, you know, my brother, one of the smartest people I've ever met, he's a professor of history in the UK. Uh, and it wasn't until he went to university and, you know, got into that life that now he's a socialist. And, you know, he's he liked, uh, what's that guy? What's Who's that socialist in the UK? Um, Corbyn? Corbyn? And, you know, he's just fully on board with all of that. And there's nothing that we can say that can break through to him because he's, rash, he's, smart, he's smart enough to rationalize everything you know and just like be able to compartmentalize everything whereas someone who doesn't think that deeply would just go well that doesn't make sense with that so it doesn't work you know they can just kind of jump through all that and see it, it, it but, but then they use that as a bludgeon they're saying oh it's just you know you dumb people you can't understand all this uh, all this yeah. clever stuff like we can like us elites <laughs> Yeah, um, a lot of us just go with our instincts. It doesn't feel right for me to see people in misery. It doesn't feel right for me to be hungry. It doesn't feel right for me to not be allowed five kilometers out of my house. It doesn't feel right for me. So you don't feel right. That that's be it. And it's not really necessarily a dumb move because it's instinctive. It's like how animals, how humans operate. It's like how we survive, how we thrive as a species. So what they're going to do is that they're going to ignore all of that and they're going to try to rationalize it in a very complicated way to make sure that they don't feel like the assholes that they are. But, you know, it's always the smart people. It's always the... the now you ask these people, they, they blow a tire. Do you know how to change that? If something breaks in your house, do you know how to change that? No, they don't. They don't know how to do anything. They don't know how to help society. If their neighbors uh, is having a heart attack, they don't know how to do CPR. But they do know how to tell you, you know, whatever it is that they want you to believe and, and rationalize it, even though it feels wrong for the rest of us, all of us. I feel like Julia would be a great neighbor to have because I feel like all those things she just listed, she could do for you. <laughs> But will yeah, I? well, <laughs> depends. <laughs> depends. 
Someone was saying earlier that uh, Julia is black pilled. Yeah, you. Uh, if, if you're hanging the uh, if you're hanging the the wrong flag on your house, yeah, she might just ignore your cries. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Oh, it, it it is so true. I saw a fantastic tweet. Uh, the other day I, I mean i'm totally paraphrasing here but it was something like we didn't all go into lockdown you rich liberals went into lockdown and then uh, the working class all had to come out to uh, uh deliver you things and help you with all the things that you can't do it was yeah. another it was another interesting um terminology that came out of this uh many terminologies like social distancing and we we have a we have a great one here in Victoria, which is the the slogan for the government now, which is uh, "staying apart keeps us together." Yeah, and it's, it's right, right out of um, it's right out of uh, freaking nineteen eighty four. Yeah, total total sense. It feels just normal. <laughs> yeah, that seems that seems kosher. Yeah, that's fine. A friend yeah. of mine. I don't have any patience with these people anymore. Yes, yeah, it's, it's gotten completely, completely absurd. I was going to say, Michael, I had a friend that worked at one of the big pharmaceuticals up until two months ago. Mm. And he can't say which one, but it's one of the big two. And he left because the PhDs in there were so much in their lane, right? And they're all, of course, very far left. He's not that any little thing that he had to be done in the lab, you know, he with his master's degree would have to come in there and be like, here, let me show you how this is actually done. And they would just be completely clueless, you know, running PCR or whatever it was. And of course, all their politics are far left and, you know, they're all for lockdowns, all this other stuff. He's like, I gotta get out of here. And these people don't know what's going on. And every project that we're doing is failing because they think that because they have the PhD and they have this these credentials, this credentialism that comes with that, that they're infallible. These people don't live in reality. No, they don't, and it's uh, I mean it's 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 pervasive and it is affecting every aspect of our lives. This this concept, uh, you know, I saw it I saw it coming a while ago because when I was really into science, I love I love reading up about, you know, the new scientific discoveries. I love science history. I'd read about all the discoveries in the past. So I'd follow science channels. And then I, I noticed that it, it became, I mean, it just became, what was it called? Like pop style. And, you know, and, and, and then all of a sudden it's just like they argue from authority. Like, well, I'm this guy. I've got this degree or whatever. So I'm right. And you don't have anything to say about it. It really, uh, it just, it affects everything. Like you were saying, it affects climate change. Like normal people can see something right in front of their eyes. And, and like, they can, but you can't say it because, oh, you're not a doctor. You're not a physicist or whatever. It pisses me off. Like the, this Demo Lovato is like, um, I don't, I don't care what it means to my career. I'm just not going to support Trump. You know, like that's so courageous, girl. You know, <laughs> like, yeah, I saw that. Yeah, like woo. You know, she really. She said, like, I don't. This, I don't care if this is going to hurt my career. I'm going against Trump. That <laughs> they don't. They don't live in reality. I mean, they, well, they, they kind of say, um, you know, well, the Republicans have the Senate and the executive, uh, so therefore they're in power, not realizing that. You know, if you control all of the cultural institutions and even a lot of the deep state institutions as well, right. like that's a whole chunk of power there that they just completely want to, oh, that's nothing. Don't worry about that. Um, I wanted to ask you, because uh, we've talked about the US and Australia, what's, uh, what's Brazil like now? What's um, happening down there now? Um, same almost same thing as in the US. Um, there's a new um, populist right wing president power. Mm -hmm. And but I think because the Bra Brazilian government was under uh, historically, it was under the, the socialist power for such a long time. 
they still hold a lot of power even though they don't hold the executive so for yeah. example we were able to gather enough support to impeach the president popular support mm -hmm. but we weren't really able to do that again it was almost like like I don't know if you watch uh, Dragon Ball Z, but it's like that that one little thing that he can only do once because it implements so yeah. much power. Yeah. So he has to be really careful who he's gonna, uh, you know, throw the blow against. So mm -hmm. we did it with the president, but we weren't able to gather enough support and people back in the streets to do with the uh, uh, vice president. We weren't able to get the the Congress people out. We weren't so we weren't able to clean the whole slate. So what we have there is just you know, the the Congress people, the Senate people, they're still far left. So they're even though we managed to um, elect a right wing president, everybody's working against him. They're not trying to let him get anything done. They're trying to investigate him, his kids, his. XXX wife's cousin uh, of the third degree, whatever. They're trying to make this man's life hell. And, uh, you know, it's just a sad thing, in my opinion. It sounds like there's a lot of parallels there to um, what uh, has happened with Trump. Uh, and there's parallels with you know what you're saying with the uh, the comic book industry you know our field as well the, 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 it's, it's infested with uh, far left activists and yeah you know you can kick out the editor in chief of some big company but if all of the employees are still of that same mindset nothing or not not much changes or it's really hard to do any changes after that um, is the uh, is the pro are the prospects for the country looking better? now or is it still brazil yeah um i think so uh because whenever you have a, a right wing free market president the markets look good there's more uh international investment in the country that translates to jobs and ultimately they even though they're making his life hell and obstructing and etc he's still able to do some things. So it looks better than it did before. But he's not going to be able to fix everything that he wants to fix right away. He's not. It's not going to be that much better because of the amount of people that are just actively working against them, like um, the media, it, uh, the, the other politicians, etc. Mm -hmm. Sounds just like what's happening here. Yeah. Grind yeah, it's down with a russia hoax for three and a half years so what's going on with that because i mean it, it seems like there's new revelations every day and did i hear that it came out that hillary was pretty much behind the whole russia collusion thing was that is that a thing did that happen uh hillary is behind everything <laughs> <laughs> she's behind me right now get out of here hillary yeah, yeah uh like it's like these are massive bombshell uh, bombshell sort of allegations and you know, but, but they come with evidence as far as i can Just see tried. they're like it, yeah. it's like oh why are you still going on about that like it, anyone who finally sort of you know wakes up and sees how the whole media system operates and how it's set up and who it's set up to protect you, you all of a sudden you're like oh my god i live in this insane corrupt world yeah. and uh it, it's maddening it's it's really heartening to see i like i like to watch a lot of walk away videos and stuff like that uh you know you see the same kinds of stories come out uh, again and again um uh but my goodness it's um the the hypocrisy uh, sometimes fr coming from the media is it's enough to make you just want to bang your head against the wall yeah don't do that <laughs> <laughs> I won't. I won't. I have. I have a family to look after. Though, and I won't. But you know, figuratively, I will be. I, I mean, it's it's just nuts. Um, who, what do you think is going to happen in the election, Julia? Um, do you think Trump is going to win? So, uh, you know, like like I mentioned, people are telling me, "What do you think is going to happen in the election? What are you going to do? Are you what?" Are you, 
I honestly don't know, but I am a lazy, irresponsible person. So I don't care any either way. I'll figure out, I'll find out. I will deal with whatever happens. So I'm not really worried, but I wouldn't necessarily tell people to follow that because let's say there's unrest in the streets. Let's say there's protests. Let's say somebody runs over somebody in the highway. Let's say there's mass shootings. Let's say there's things like that. Perhaps you should, you know, have some food so you're not for like a week. So you're not constantly going out where there's protests. There's a lot of traffic. You can move things like that. I think that there's going to be some unrest. Um, I think that the results of the elections are going to be questioned. And yep. even after they, it's going to be like a big Russia collusion where they, they freaking impeach the president. Uh, of the United States is going to be something similar to that where they're going to uh, talk about it until they have no breath and then they're going to come up with something else. So they're going to uh, talk about how the results were contested uh, and they're going to try to do whatever it is that they have been doing. A lot of these activists and these companies uh, are you know, essentially paid. There is, I live in a small rural town and I had, I have sources within law enforcement and they were telling me there's a protest in downtown. I didn't even know we had a downtown, but it's like these people are coming from, you know, big centers and they're trying to, you know, bring chaos, whatever, wherever, wherever they can. Um, so I do suspect there's going to be some chaos. I do suspect that the election results is going to be uh, contested. Um, mm -hmm. So for me to tell you that Trump is going to win, I think he's going to win the vote, of course. But I don't know necessarily if he's going to get to key power. Um, if that mean if they're going to try to do some kind of, uh, they're saying that um, the results are not going to come out. Couldn't probably are not going to come out the full results months later. Um, yeah. and, and they're saying that Twitter was saying that they're going to ban anybody who, um, you know, talks about the results of the election on November 3rd. And I, I don't really understand that, but that tells me that they suspect that by November 3rd, even though we have the results until it's like it goes through a full process we shouldn't really be saying that those are the results. And so if that's the case, then who keeps power? Will it be Pence? Will it be Nancy Pelosi? So I, I, I wouldn't, you know, I don't know what to expect. I think that he's going to win the elections. Um, what that means for us as a country. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm ready. I, I thrive in chaos. So I'm ready. Whatever happens, I'm not really prepared. <laughs> You're prepared. I, I'm You're I'm prepared. hoping for it. Yeah, I'm yeah. prepared by not preparing. But I, yeah, I do think that people should be thinking about this very carefully because it's just from everything that we've seen, small businesses being burned down mm -hmm. to to unarmed protesters getting shot in the streets mm -hmm. um, just in the last month or so. Um, yep. It's not safe for you to be openly political, especially at your job. You could lose mm -hmm. your job. There's mm -hmm. that level of censorship. Fear is censorship. So yep. I just think this is a personal question that everybody needs to ask themselves. And whatever answer and conclusion they come up to, they need to um, take it seriously. They need to listen to their instinct, their gut, and just you know make sure that everything is safe, that they're... Uh, doing what they can, that they're voting, that they're speaking their minds on social media without fear of censorship while they can. Just, you know, really taking ownership of where the country is going. Well said. Yeah. Well yeah, said. It, absolutely. I mean, yeah. w recently we've seen, what did we see? The Trump campaign get suspended, the, the, the press secretary, uh, you know, these companies, Twitter and Facebook, and I mean, I don't know how many other ones you know deal with political stuff, but I mean, they will do pretty much whatever they can uh, to 
you know, to censor whoever they want, to censor whatever idea they want to, um, you know, to follow their agenda. I think you're exactly right that whatever the outcome, there will be unrest in the streets. Uh, and, it, you know, it might look different. Uh, it might not. I think we saw um, Veritas, uh, you know, exposed that even, even if Biden wins, the, uh, these agitators, these activists, the far left ones, uh, they're not going to stop. You know that that this is that that would just be a small win on their way to what they see as their ultimate victory, which is, you know, the uh, the the country becoming, you know, a communist country or something like that. Whatever it is, you know, some people have different ideas. Some people say they just want to tear it down, uh, so that the globalists can take over. I don't know about any of that, but I mean, they clearly have their agenda, and they're not going to stop. So um, whatever happens, uh, I think you're exactly right to make sure that you're, you know prepared and safe and and have uh, whatever you need uh, for yourself we have um bradley shackleford in the chat here is very adamant that uh trump will win the republicans uh, will win it uh, win back the house uh, he says well said to you julia and he calls you a genius a mega mind genius <laughs> so uh there you go <laughs> You've got a fan there in Bradley uh, Shackleford. Well, Julia, um, we're almost up on the hour, uh, so I think we can probably leave it there. I just want to thank you again uh, for your time. Uh, very gracious of you to come on and uh, chat with us uh, here on this channel. No uh, so thank you. Invite me anytime. Yeah. I'd yeah, no. be happy to join you guys. You guys are very uh, fun to talk to. I know that I post a lot on Twitter and people think that you know when they meet me they think that I'll be that like that much of an extrovert I'm really not so I mean it when I say you guys are fun to talk to oh great and that's cool to hear this is not weed if anybody <laughs> <laughs> it's perfectly fine we I'm you know I have uh, some libertarian leanings uh, that's all cool whatever you want to do in the privacy of your own home is is your business uh, I wish <laughs> thank you uh th thank you christian for christian for help uh setting this up this has been of really course. cool a cool discussion thank you to everyone who's joined us uh yeah i would uh, love to have julia back on i i love these chats just kind of you know getting different perspectives from from around the world and different people and i totally understand what you're saying as well about twitter uh our twitter personalities are not our real life personalities <laughs> That is 100% accurate. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, thanks again. And um, we have another show coming up in a couple of hours. It'll be a comic book show again. So hope you join us uh, for that. And we'll see you next time. All right. Bye.